Past mistakes in the Middle East should have taught this House that military intervention, starting out as limited, can quickly escalate, risking a sequence of events far larger and more terrible and risk even dragging us into war. It is for this reason, according to reports in The Times, that Foreign Office officials were, and I quote, incredibly nervous about last week's military assault in Yemen. Driving the region's instability is Israel's horrifying assault on Gaza, which has now lasted more than 100 days. So rather than giving Israel the green light to continue its brutal bombardment of Gaza and risking a wider conflict, will the Prime Minister, Prime Minister seek to de-escalate the situation and call for an immediate ceasefire? Prime Minister. Uh, perhaps the Honourable Lady would, would do well to call on Hamas and the Houthis to de-escalate the situation. Andrew Percy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Too many people give a free pass to the terrorists who, uh, uh, who um, uh, perpetrated the worst murder of Jews, and we've just seen an example of that. Just as we saw examples of that on our streets uh, this weekend. Order, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and in line with the House's rules, I inform the member in question that I would be referencing him. In the previous statement, the member for Brigham Gould implied that I had just, and I quote, given a free pass to the terrorists who carried out the October the 7th attack. Mr. Deputy Speaker, that claim is grotesquely untrue. My question to the Prime Minister in no way had that implication. I was calling for a de escalation in the region and for an immediate ceasefire, and his accusation is absolutely untrue. In this House, and Elsewhere, I have repeatedly condemned the actions of Hamas and called for the release of all hostages. Moreover, the member's gross accusation is playing to a racist trope, implying that because I am a Muslim, I support Hamas. So, with rising Islamophobia and racist tropes, asking British Muslims to prove their loyalty, can I ask you for guidance on how to get a full retraction and apology from the member for Brig and Ghoul? Further to that point of order, Andrew Percy. As loath as I am to engage in this silliness, let me be absolutely clear. Let me be absolutely clear to the honourable lady. Not only did I not reference her, I have on numerous if she would let me if she'd listen to the response. On numerous occasions I have said too many people have failed to call out uh, what I think is unacceptable. I've said that before. I'm not going to stop saying that I think people have given a free pass on occasions um, to uh, behaviour and have not uh, dealt with this with a fair hand. That is an open point of debate. I have called people out on my own side for that. If she could sit here and listen to me, it has absolutely nothing to do with the um, thing. But I don't want to engage in this silliness. So I will say, I will say to the Honourable Lady, I have absolutely no intention of inferring at all that she is in any... Let me respond that she is in any way in support of any of that. I'm sure she isn't. I never said that. I would never say that. But I'm also, Mr Deputy Speaker, not going to not say what I think on issues in this House and call out what I think is on this issue. Too many people in this place giving a free pass to one side whilst not acknowledging the horrors that the other side suffered. Thank you. 